Welcome to episode two of the Tandem Talk Show. I'm your host, Coach G, and I'm really excited that you're here today. If you're new to our episode, this is our weekly show in which I go live every Tuesday at 7.30 to answer your questions and to discuss one topic that can help you lose fat faster, gain muscle easier, and just make the whole dieting process a lot more simple. So I'm glad that you're here today. Um, If you can can hear me, uh, please press like, and uh, we'll go ahead and get things kicked off. Before we do, I wanna make two quick shout outs. One to our client, Mike Mullins. So Mike Mullins is part of our VIP nutrition coaching program, and he has lost over 18 pounds in 10 weeks, which is amazing. I'm so proud of Mike. He's being led by, um, he's being led by Coach Barnes of the Tandem Nutrition Team. So great job, Mike and uh, Coach Barnes. We're very, very. Uh, whoa, whoa! Do not kick your light stand. <laughs> Things move. Uh, very proud of you guys. Next up, I also want to give a shout out to Alex Povey. Uh, he just joined our VIP Plus nutrition coaching program. He's out in the UK, and I'm super excited to get started with him. I'll be working one on one with him throughout our program for the next 12 weeks, and I could not be more excited uh, to have this opportunity to work with him. Guys, we have some questions to answer today, and I also wanna talk about one topic that comes up all the time, so um, I cannot wait to dig into that. Now, before I do, I do wanna answer a few questions from our community. If you wanna ask me questions, type community, if I can even say that word right, community, down in the comments, because that is how you ask, ask me questions for this show. Um, of course, you may ask questions down below as well, but uh, questions in our private Facebook community, the Tandem Nutrition Team always gets first priority, and we love to have you in there. Um, so guys, first question I got was from Boston, and it, it was just, this is actually a question I've never been asked before. It's a really good question. He says, because I talk a lot about mini cuts, but he's like, what about mini bulks? He said, can you do a mini bulk like you do a mini cut or should you bulk, should your bulk be a lot slower? This is a really good question. So it's a lot easier to prevent the loss of muscle mass than it is to prevent the gain in excess body fat. So a lot of times when we work with, with people, uh, we try to stick to a longer lean muscle gain phase just because it does take longer to put on muscle mass than it does to lose body fat. So that's why we tend not to push mini bulks. Um, rather, that is why we push mini cuts because, again, we can lose fat a lot faster and then we can put on muscle. Guys, uh, Matt Tindy, my man, thank you for your question, bro. I appreciate you. So this is one thing that I have not touched on yet. It is a surprise soon to be revealed in our private Facebook community. Matt asks, Coach G, what's the VIP and VIP Plus programs? Guys, so these are our brand new programs that we're launching officially next year. But we have pre-launched this year for our coaching system. So I'm going to have a, a private episode just for um, those two descriptions and to give you more information. But there are private and VIP uh, programs that you can get special attention from your own personal tandem coach to help you lose fat, gain muscle mass, and rapidly transform your body. So more, more information on that to come. Matt, my dude, thank you for asking that. Okay, guys, even more questions, let me know. Keep these people guessing, you know it, man. So here's another great question from, uh, from Boston. Boston asks, what is a sufficient amount of time for non-competitors, so people like me, to be in a muscle building phase? So as you know, gaining muscle mass takes time, especially if you've been training more than three to five years. So if you're a beginner, you, know, you can stay in a muscle gain phase for 12, 15, 20 weeks because the possibility of having a body recomposition effect, meaning the possibility of gaining muscle mass while losing body fat is highly likely. Your body is very new to this external stimuli that allows it to be receptive and grow, respond to its environment from weight training. So if you're like me, if you've been training for five, 10, 12 years, I'm not gonna tell you how many years I've been training because I am not huge yet, like Matt Timby, but Guys, 12 to 15 weeks is a good amount of time to stay in a surplus before you, before you hop back into a mini cut or into a maintenance phase. And I'll explain more about that later if you have 
questions. By the way, guys, have you ever heard of the term metabolic reset phase or maintenance phase? If not, comment maintenance phase below and I will have one episode solely on that topic. Okay, guys, one last question before I go to today's discussion topic. Today's discussion topic is the five reasons why you're not losing body fat and how to fix it. And it's in today's episode, I'm going over the first two, then next Tuesday, you with the next two, then two Tuesdays from now, I'll go over the last one. So guys, last question for the day is from our client, Joe Shepard. Uh, really great question, Thanksgiving's coming up. And uh, he asks, with Thanksgiving coming up, would it be possible to splurge one meal and still not throw your weekly calorie deficit out of the window? He says, I'm pretty sure I know the answer and I know what it's gonna be, but uh, I just wanna check before I dust off my old holiday eating sweatpants. So it is possible to have a big cheat meal, a big cheat day, and not ruin your weekly calorie deficit, though I will say that you have to prepare in advance. Meaning if you wanna have a splurge on one meal or one day, take time to take out calories from the days beforehand, whether it's a week before, two weeks before, or even just the day before. It all depends on how aggressive you wanna get with your cheat meal. If you wanna go over 1,000 calories, then take out 200 calories a day for five days before that, and therefore, uh, hey, Matt, we got you, my man. We'll get you some, <laughs> some holiday eatings. <laughs> oh, man, guys, if you're not following Matt Tempe, uh, go ahead and click on his name and follow him. He's a really great guy. Inspirational guy to follow. One of my good friends and mentors. Hey, Mike, hey, thank you for joining us. I just gave you a shout out on our on our live talk today, so go back and rewind that. Um, just, I just told everyone that we're really proud of you for losing uh, like 18, 20 pounds in just 10 weeks. So great job, man, keep it up. Um, so guys, that is all for the questions today. I think that I answered that question. Oh yes, so to answer your question for Thanksgiving coming up, one great way to avoid holiday weight gain is just to play it smart and strategize your calories beforehand so that you're, you're taking out calories that you would put towards the big day. Um, so guys, thank you for your questions. If you have some questions, hey, what's up, John? Hey, I just now spoke with your brother today, man. Hope you're doing good. So today's topic I wanna get into are the five reasons why you're not losing body fat and how to fix it. So in today's discussion, I'm gonna hit on the first two, and then next Tuesday, I'll go over the next two. Then two Tuesdays from now, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> I'm gonna go over the last one. So guys, a lot of people come to us um, and to other nutrition professionals and are like, yo, why aren't I losing body fat? And it's simple. There's just one reason why. And it's because you're not in the calorie deficit. That's simple as it is, right? So like the laws of thermodynamics, you cannot out outrule those. So there are five reasons, five things that are keeping you from being in the calorie deficit today I'm gonna go over the first two. And as I mentioned, the next talk shows every Tuesday at 7.30, I'll be going over more. So the first two are one, you're not tracking your calories. And number two is you're not tracking your calories accurately. So Peter Drucker said it best, you cannot manage what you do not measure. So who here, I'm just kinda of curious, if you're listening to this right now, or if you're listening to this on, on, on Rewind, uh, give me a like if you currently track your calories. I'm super curious. Because a lot of people say, well, I eat healthy. I eat all the healthy food, clean, you know, whatever that is supposed to mean. Guys, you can eat all the healthy foods in the world, but if you're still eating too many calories, you're gonna gain body weight and body fat. It doesn't matter if, uh, thank you for all the love, Matt. I appreciate you, brother. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're eating chicken or broccoli all day long. You can get fat by eating too much chicken or broccoli. And that's a lot of broccoli and chicken, but still, it's very important to know where you stand at each day and to know how many calories you consume. Tracking in my fitness pal can be a huge awareness factor just to give you some insight on how, how many calories you're eating each day. So if you're not losing body fat and you're not tracking your calories, I encourage you today, download my fitness pal Go throughout the step of setting it up and start tracking your calories. If you need some help, if you need some tips, go into our private Facebook community, the Tandem Nutrition Team, and we give helps, we give helps. 
<laughs> we give help. That helps. Uh, we give assistance to help you and support you throughout that because that is very, very important. And so after you've mastered that, then it's very important to know exactly what you're tracking and to know that you're tracking accurately. And a lot of people get confused with the green shield in my fitness pal. Like even I did, like I'm not gonna lie. Like I thought it meant it's correct. It's not correct. My fitness pal just gives the green shield to food items that have complete nutritional information. Just last week, I pulled up eggs on my fitness pal and it said it had like three grams of carbs, six grams of fat, and like one gram of protein. That was obviously, ob obviously very wrong. So it's very important to track accurately, not only in the sense of entering the right food items, but knowing how to estimate and estimate pretty closely when you go out to eat. So this holiday season, you're probably eating out with friends, going out to different social events, going to parties, restaurants, and here's a quick tip that can help you stay on track and stay in the calorie deficit while you're eating outside of your normal environment. Here it is. Guys, when you're going out to eat, let's say you go out to a restaurant. If the restaurant is in my fitness pal, Enter the, the meal or the food item that you consume and just adjust the serving size. So if you ordered like the grilled chicken sandwich from Applebee's, I don't know, um, enter 1.2. So you increase the serving size to 1.2 for all restaurants that are inside my fitness bow. Now, if the restaurant is not in my fitness bow, then that means <laughs> I would recommend increasing the serving size to 1.4. So why don't we do that? That we do that because we're accounting for hidden calories and bigger portion sizes. I used to work in a really fancy Italian restaurant in high school um, and in college. And I'll tell you something. Look, we look. If you think you're ordering broccoli that's less than 50 calories, you're wrong because this is how we made broccoli. First, we got broccoli. We put it into this like the strainer thing. We dipped it in boiling water to get it really soft, right? Then after that, we got a skillet and we put a big old glob of butter in there. And we literally took it from, took the broccoli from the boiling water and put it inside the butter. And like you just, I mean, so that is a lot of calories. And no, if the broccoli tastes too good to be true, like it's probably not 50 calories, it's maybe 250 calories. So be careful. Uh, and I would say try to limit out, limit eating out as much as possible, but that's no fun. So what I'd recommend, cutting back calories the day before you go out to eat. And then, <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't worry, Matt. I will not be taking you to Applebee's. We're going to IHOP, brother. Metro. Actually, dude, Metro in Indianapolis has some great pancakes. So next time you come visit, we'll be going to uh, Metro together. So all I have to say is, guys, if you're trying to go to a restaurant and you want to see on track, overestimate portion sizes, look up the menu online beforehand and just plan ahead. Cut back on calories the day before, <laughs> the week before, because more than likely you're eating a lot more calories than that suggested food item says. If you go to a party where there's like just everyone bring their own food, just estimate. Estimate larger portion sizes. And again, save up calories for those times. So guys, those are the first two reasons I did leave out something. So again, number one is you're not tracking your calories. So if you're not doing that yet, I would recommend starting with that. Hey, hey, Tracy, thank you for your question. So Tracy asked, how do you order without the butter? What would you ask for? So I'll give you a real life example of this. Last weekend, I went with my friend Carlos to Metro Diner to get some pancakes and some eggs for breakfast after a training session. And him and I both asked for eggs and whatever we ordered, I was like, hey, can we not cook it in butter? Like, no oil? And he's like, hey, I'm allergic to dairy. Like, don't put it in there. And I'm like, I just don't want it. And literally just tell them, I want to cook without butter. And they'll find a way to do it. So just ask them, like, hey, look, I'm, can, can you just not cook this in butter? And they'll be more than happy to do that. Um, so great question because sometimes we think that, like, we're being annoyance to people. But really, they're, they're there to serve us. So just order it, like, the way you like. Um, and yeah, thank you for asking, asking Tracy. So the first one was one, track your calories. Two, you're not tracking accurately. Two reasons why you're not maintaining a calorie deficit. Guys, and this also includes little bites and sips and licks of things. Everything adds up. Like even if you don't track it, your body still does. 
So like, don't think like the peppermint you ate, and this is you know really small, but little things add up over time. So if you really want to get serious losing fat over the long run, count every single thing. Hold yourself accountable. Have a friend. You know, call a friend like Matt Timby. I I call him. He holds me accountable to things, and he does a great job. And and so just have someone, um, have someone who is there to support you throughout your journey. Uh, whether it's a friend, a coach, you know, I don't know, your teammate. But guys, those are the first two reasons why you're not losing body fat. Again, one, because you're not tracking your calories, and two, because you're not tracking accurately. Guys, next Tuesday at 7.30, be back for episode three, in which I will go over the next two reasons why you're not losing body fat and how to fix it. And then two Tuesdays from now, I'll be going to the last one. Guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for being here. If you have any questions for me, drop them down below, and I'll be more than happy to um, answer them. God bless you guys, and I'll see you next Tuesday.